Nom Nom delivers fresh food with whole ingredients, backed by veterinarian science. Science tells us that a dog's health starts in the bowl, so improving their diet is one of the best ways to help them live a long and happy life. Nom Nom's food is full of proteins your dog loves and the vitamins and nutrients they need to thrive. All you have to do is order, pour, and serve. Ready to make the switch to fresh? Order Nom Nom today. Go to https colon slash slash trinom.com forward slash curveball and get 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's https colon slash slash T-R-Y-N-O-M dot com forward slash curveball. Plus, Nom Nom comes with a money back guarantee. If your dog's tail isn't wagging within 30 days, Nom Nom will refund your first order. No fillers, no nonsense, just Nom Nom. Welcome to the Living the Dream podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. achieve, achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, I am joined by best-selling author, former Marine, and motivational speaker, Michael Botts. Michael focuses on personal growth, resilience, and leadership, and he has a remarkable story to tell, so we're going to be talking to him and see what he's up to. So, Michael, thank you so much for joining me today. Curtis, thanks for having me, man. I'm so excited to be here. Absolutely. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Sure. I um, I was in the Marine Corps. I got out of the Marine Corps, worked in the fitness industry for a little bit, and then I started a restoration company. And I ran that rest- restoration company for about two decades. And we had some epic failures and some epic successes. And through my experience as a Marine, as a business owner, and as a father of four, I've kind of evolved some success principles. And now my whole mission is to help people succeed as a coach, as a speaker, as an author, help people break through what's stopping them, to break through their limiting beliefs. Um, The main principles that I teach on is falling down is allowed and getting up is required. And the other one is that you were born, I am enough. You get caught in the riptide of life and sucked out into the ocean of, am I enough? And then my job is to get you back on the beach of I am enough. So you start making decisions out of that courage of I am enough. All right. Well, let's talk about your life as a as a Marine, you you know, explain to us uh, as much as you can. And, you know, tell us why you decided to join and how long you were there and and kind of what you did in the Marines and your experiences. Absolutely. Absolutely. I am. I joined the Marine Corps because I had went to one year college. There wasn't really any money or in my brain could not comprehend that there was going to be any more money. I had a limiting belief at that time. So I did that first year of college. I played football at a junior college in Kansas and then joined the Marine Corps mainly just because it was the next step as far as, you know, making some money, you know, getting out of the small town, you know, seeing what what the world had to offer. And I've tried to always do things at an elite excellent level. So for me, the Marine Corps was the obvious choice. And while I was in boot camp, you know, you take all these tests and you, you know, they do you all this psychological evaluations on you and everything. And I qualified for a program they call Yankee White. And the Yankee White program is where you guard the president. So then you have to go through all these clearances and all these other evaluations because you're going to have a loaded weapon around the president of the United States. And so I qualified for that and I worked and I got to be there for the very end of President Reagan, just the barely President Reagan and then President Bush. I trained with the hostage rescue team, FBI hostage rescue team a little bit. Um, I worked at Bethesda. I worked at um, the the, um, Pentagon with Casper Weinberger. Um, I did some stuff at the White House. So it was a great, great experience. I got a lot of great leadership skills while I was in the Marine Corps. 
All right. Well, um, what made you want to get into motivational speaking and writing? When I was younger, I, you know, I did some preaching and I was on a, a spiritual journey. Like when I was 14 to 17, I put on this thing called Youth Quake and it was a bunch of youth in the area in the small town I live in. And we all came in and we had a lock in and we had guest speakers and stuff like that. And I spoke at that event. And so it's kind of been in my DNA. It's been in my nature for a long time. And then joining the Marine Corps, I kind of, you know, got away from that and just focused on being a Marine. And then as a business owner, it started to evolve out of me and grow out of me again. And I started to get out of the am I enough and start more into the I am enough. And when my kids started school, I started teaching a life skills class in their school. And then that turned into talking at high schools and universities. And then some people came and were like, hey, could you help us grow our business? And so it kind of evolved into being a coach. Well, tell us about your your life as a uh, business owner. And, 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 you know, I guess it was natural as a former Marine to go into business. But, you know, kind of explain that to us. Yeah, I am. Um... I was working for this guy and he, it was a restoration company. And he said, you want to buy the business? And I'm like, well, I don't have any money, but I'd love to buy the business. So he financed the whole thing. And I took that business over. And the first year we had rookie of the year because we grew the business like 80% the first year. And after that, we kept getting executive awards and executive. It was a franchise. And so the corporation would give us executive awards you know, I fell in love with building people, training people. That's my passion, you know, motivating people. And so I was able to do all that as a business owner at my, you know, at my pace, at my level, you know. And then I started to do like, you know, Facebook lives to share the knowledge or the experiences I've had with others. And then that kind of caught some traction. So that business was really, you know, we had some great successes, but we also had some epic failures. I mean, Making payroll is probably the hardest thing a business owner has to do. And we had sites across the United States, 17 sites across the United States. So making payroll was brutal. And I learned a lot about failing. You know, I feel like I feel like that's where I had my evolution with failure because I was pretty successful. You know, in the Marines, I was pretty successful. In college football, I was pretty successful. You know, I get in this business and we have those first spikes of success. But then failure started to show up and show its ugly head. And my first concept of failure was that I had to fight failure. I had to resist failure. It was a it was a battle, Michael versus failure. And then I had some evolutions at the end of the business that kind of changed my view on failure. But the business was great. I enjoyed it a lot. I learned a bunch of stuff. And I think the biggest lesson I took away from it is my relationship with failure. Well, tell us about the views that that you did learn on failure. Uh, how did they change and what did they change to? Yeah, my my success for formula is risk, fail, learn, repeat. That's my success that I teach my clients. I teach that in my talks. It's in my book and risk. We can all do that. That's That's something that a lot of us can get our brains around. You have taken a risk and built this beautiful podcast and and. I've heard, I'm sure you've had a bunch of failures. And then the learn, the learn is the value. The learning is the platinum of the, of the formula. But for a while, for a long time in my life, I thought failure was the enemy and I had to fight it. But I always lost and failure had its boot on the back of my neck, my face down in disappointment. And I would get discouraged and depressed and, you know, go into a dark place. And I finally had an evolution where I, realize that failure is just my teacher. Failure is my friend. One of the titles in my book is failure is your friend. And a lot of people that's hard to get around because you're raised. If you get an F, you know, you're, you're a bad boy. You know, if you crash the car, you know, you're a bad girl. If you, you know, if you show up late, you're bad. That all these things that are, they connect failure to being a failing as a failure. And what I've learned is to sit at the feet of fail and get the lesson. So instead of fighting fail, I'm more of dancing with fail now. And it's a, and it's cooperative and failure is my teacher. So the evolution I had in those 20 years of owning that business was that failure is not my enemy. Failure is my teacher. And then the formula of risk, fail, learn, and repeat came out of that. 
And it's just, it's a brilliant, brilliant formula for success. Absolutely. Well, you kind of mentioned your book. So tell the listeners about your book, where they can get it and what they can expect when they read it. Oh, yeah. You can get it on Amazon and it's called Escape Average, Go for the Big. It's time to break through what's stopping you. And the cover is this hand gripping barbed wire, like breaking through your limiting beliefs. And if, you, if, you, if I go through the table of contents, it's just kind of showing you what the, the book is about. You know, chapter one is playing it small is selfish. So imagine if we started embracing our bigness, embracing our awesomeness, embracing our brilliance, as opposed to playing it small. Because a lot of our lives, when we did show off, Somebody's like, oh, you're being cocky or, oh, you're you're hurting everyone else's feelings or you're making your brother look bad if you show off. So don't do that. So we start to play it small. We think that's the solution to that when actually. What 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 the universe or God or whatever your higher power wants is you all in all your potential, because when you play it small, no one else wins like you. Curtis, doing this podcast over and over, repetition, bam, bam, rep, 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 setting it up, publishing it, editing it. Look at you. You're not playing it small. You're doing something big and beautiful. And I promise you, Curtis, someone's listening to this and they're going to live another day because you had the courage to not play it small, but to go for the big. That's chapter one. Um, Chapter two is failure is your friend. We kind of talked about that already. Chapter three is epic quantum leaps of action. This is talking about falling in love with planting the seeds as opposed to falling in love with the result. So, you know, the result could be I'm at the top of the mountain. I reached the goal. But actually what you need to do is fall in love with planting the seeds. You got to fall in love with climbing the mountain, because when you get to that peak, guess what's right in the horizon? Another mountain to climb. So the, the truly successful are the ones that can fall in love with planting the seeds. And then there's just some more epic chapters in there. One of my favorites is there is no perfect. We're all waiting. This is the thing. Think about this, Curtis. You have done this podcast. And when you started, it probably wasn't perfect. And it wasn't brilliant. And it wasn't amazing. But you had the courage to keep doing it. And now, because you did it in spite of perfect, it's out here in the world and it's changing and impacting people's lives. Bravo to you, Chris. Bravo. I definitely appreciate it. And you are changing lives as well. So tell us about any upcoming projects that you're working on that listeners need to know about. Absolutely. On Facebook, I have a private group. It's very small and intimate. And um, we meet on Sunday nights. And that is a great opportunity for somebody to get exposed to me, see if I'm their cup of tea, see if I fit them and they fit me. Um, It's very, you know, great price for that. And if anybody's interested in that, they can leave me an email on my website. The website is themichaelbotsexperience.com. And if you want to just the the email is contact at the michaelbotsexperience.com. If someone's interested in that, I'd love to give them, if they tell them, tell me they heard about it on here on Curveball, then I'll give them a couple of weeks for free to let them taste it. Another neat thing I'm doing right now is I'm doing guided meditations at a yoga, yoga stu- studio in Alexandria, Virginia. And I'm really excited about that. That's going to be neat. Like I'm calling it the meditating Marine. So we're going in with some focus and a mission, but we're also guiding the students through meditation so that they can learn to start to hear their inner voice. All right. So the Michael Botts experience, you just answered my next question. I'm throwing at your website. So close us out with any final thoughts that you have for the listeners. Maybe if that was something that I forgot to talk about that you would like to touch on or just any final thoughts you have for the listeners. Absolutely. I just want to encourage everyone within the sound of my voice to go for the big. I want to encourage you that falling down is allowed and getting up is required is on your DNA. Since you were a baby, that's how you learned to walk, talk and eat is because you had falling down is allowed and getting up is required. Your pain does not make you special. What makes you special is you getting up from your pain and having the courage to keep going. 
So I just want to encourage you, wherever you are in your life right now, get up, get up, get up. Get up, listeners. Definitely get up and check out that Michael Botts experience. Check out his book. Please be sure to follow, rate, review, share this episode to as many people as possible. If you have any guests or suggestion topics, see Jackson 102 at Cox.net is the place to send them. As always, thank you for listening. And Michael, thank you for joining us and sharing your story. Thank you, Curtis. I'm so grateful for your time. I feel respected and honored that you've given me this opportunity and trusting me and um, peace and joy in your life, brother. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Well, I feel respected and honored that you follow my podcast and that you took time to email me and let me know that you had a story to share and to want to come on because there's a lot of podcasts out there. So I appreciate it. Absolutely. My pleasure. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.